that we're going to be recording the session. Um, and if you don't like being recorded, you can go ahead and turn your camera off. Uh, the recording will be made available on YouTube a week after today's session. Um, without further ado, I'll turn it over to you, Coco. Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Colleen. You can call me Coco uh, De Jesus. So I, I, um, I taught in in Holy Family. So Holy Family is there in Honolulu, and um, I also taught at Marion Old School. Um, so right across the street from Punahou. And after that, I realized you know I wanted to be close to my family. So I'm from the Bay Area in California, and um, I found a school that's above California here in Oregon. So I'm currently here in the Northwest, back on the mainland. And um, so I really miss, uh, you know, with you guys, I was talking to Erica earlier about the food and the rice plates of Honolulu and just the culture over there, but, um, you know, has its pros and cons. But um, thank you for being here at, at the last workshop uh, for iTeach 808. And as you can see, I am representing iTeach 808 um, from the time I went to Sacred Hearts um, in person, back when we were in person. So um, thank you, um, Sacred Hearts. Okay, uh, so let's get started here. Um, and feel free to type in the chat box if you have any questions or if you want to clarify something, or you can just unmute and feel free to, um, to do that, okay? All right, everybody. So let me start sharing my screen um, with the PowerPoint. Okay, thank you, Erica. So the, the Google Slides um, that I will be using today is also um, shared here in the chat. Okay. All right. Okay. All righty. Okay, everybody. Uh, so this this uh, this workshop is called Adobe Spark for Education, and uh, maybe let's use that reaction little section of Zoom. Um, if you can give me like a like a heart or a clap or a or a or a hand up if you've ever had your students. Um, make like videos or PowerPoints or flyers um, ever in your classes. Um, okay, so you got one person here, a couple people. Okay, thumbs up. Okay, very good. All right. Okay, looks good, everyone. So I'm just curious, just because we know it's 2020 and uh, we've been trying so hard to be creative with with keeping our students, um, you know, uh, motivated and keeping them you know, keeping up with their standards, even though they're at home with, during the pandemic. And so my students, um, I teach at St. Francis in Sherwood, Oregon. So my students, they are currently 100% uh, distance learning, but that's actually gonna change soon because they, they're gonna um, come back very, very soon based on Oregon rules. But anyway, so those of you guys that are teaching hybrid um, or in-person or distance learning, like I am currently, um, Adobe Spark could be a very, very good resource. Um, for you all. Okay, so let's um, talk about this. What is Adobe Spark? Um, so Adobe Spark, everyone, uh, you might have heard what Photoshop is before or Lightroom for my fellow photographers or um, other Adobe products, but Spark, uh, this company, Adobe, that big company, they made Spark just for us educators. And um, as an educator, as long as you are currently teaching at a school with your school email, um, you can sign up for free. I know it's the big, uh, the four letter word that we like, right, as teachers, uh, free. So it is free. <laughs> um, you guys can definitely sign up um, at Adobe Spark. And I'm gonna copy and paste this link down here. Um, yes, I know, right? Uh, teachers love hearing uh, what's free, right? Um, so Adobe Spark, let me play this quick video for you all, um, just so you can see what I'm about to show you. Okay.
Coco, I wonder if you need to reshare because I cannot hear the video at all. I wonder if you could replay, but this time uh, unshare first. I mean, uh, okay. stop sharing. And then when you click share again, check that little box has been ticked, the one at the bottom of the share screen. When you click share screen, because there was no sound. Oh, like change the, okay. Yeah, right on the left-hand corner, there is a little box that says share sound from your computer. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay, let me play that again. And then maybe if you guys can give me a, another yep. thumbs up reaction yep. um, if the sound works. Yeah, sorry, when well, we tested it just now, but I'm not sure yeah. what happened. Yeah, okay. Thank you everyone for your patience. Okay, let's do that again. Okay. Teachers, we're always looking for creative projects. And students love to share what they're learning there's a lot of products where students can create with technology, but there's also a few factors that make it challenging. They can take a lot of time to complete. They can be difficult to use. It's a pain and even sometimes unsafe for students to access the programs. And the media created, well, it doesn't look too professional. Has this been your experience? If so, then Adobe Spark for Education might be the right program for you. Adobe Spark is a web-based platform which includes three individual programs. Spark Post for creating graphics and visuals. Spark Video to edit a movie. And Spark Page to design a website on a single topic. Each of these allows students to create different types of media quickly and easily. Which means you won't have to spend a lot of time teaching them how to use it. There are beautiful templates, colors and fonts which help students produce professional looking products. Instead of searching for copyright images, Spark provides students with the opportunity to use copyright-free images for their work, a great way to reinforce digital citizenship and responsibility. And with an Adobe Spark for Education account, students can safely access their dashboard with just a few clicks. So, whether it's a social graphic, a video, or a website, Empower your students to make their thinking visible with Adobe Spark for Education. Get started today. Visit spark.adobe.com slash education. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you for everyone's patience on there. And um, I'm glad that sound uh, worked this next time here. So thank you guys uh, for that. So Adobe Spark. So there are three different sections I'm going to cover um, in this workshop here, and we can um, I can go more in depth, but definitely at the end of this workshop, I will leave my information um, just in case if you have more specific um, questions on it. 
Okay, everybody. Uh, so Adobe Spark, the three different sections I wanted to cover were a video, a page, and post. So Adobe Spark, um, like I said, they're for educators. And um, how many of you in here have ever had your students like make a video or uh, make like a PowerPoint slide before, or um, you know share pictures with you, especially with distance learning. So can I just maybe get like comments or um, reactions? Okay. So some people here with their thumbs up. All right. So with that being said, um, a lot of the times our students uh, feel that you know they have to have the perfect drawing or the perfect flyer or the perfect you know looking uh, type of artwork. But that's not the case with Adobe Spark because Adobe Spark. Uh, for teachers and your students, you can use a lot of templates um, that's already pre-made. So a lot of uh, templates that kids can choose from, especially students that don't like to draw. I know I didn't uh, like to draw as much. I was always um, self-conscious with my drawings. Um, but let me start here with Spark Video. So Spark Video, I have an example here that I made um, from a field trip. So my very first year in, in Honolulu, with Holy Family, I took the eighth graders to um, Hawaii Volcano, so on the Big Island. And uh, I had the students, I had my students document, you know, like a like a photo essay. And I had them do like a slideshow. So let me just show you what that looks like. And, I, and my uh, link to this slideshow is below as well. So I'm gonna... Um, show you that and how to edit it based off of like the student's perspective or even the teacher perspective um, in that sense. Okay. All right. So right here, um, let me go on this page, choose another tab. Okay. All right, so let's go to this project. So right now I'm logged in as an Adobe educator here on the Adobe Spark website. And you can see some of the projects that I've already kind of worked on um, from the teacher's perspective. So a lot of these you can make as like a template that your students can see and you can go over it with them um, when you're introducing a project. Because, you know, students, our students love, love, love examples. And if you don't show them an example, right, they can um, definitely, you know, do their own thing. So we want to guide them um, throughout the whole process. Um, so with this project, let me show you this example with Adobe Spark Video. Okay. All right. So Adobe Spark uh, video post and page, they show you like this little cool tutorial where they can um, give you some tips or some advice on how to start it. Um, and definitely how many of you feel overwhelmed, you know, when you go on a new website and you try something new, especially with these techni technical um, different resources and you don't know what to do because uh, there's no tutorial or you have to read through a lot of stuff um, in that sense, right? Yeah, definitely, me too. Um, so I'm not going to show you this video here because I'm going to show you the tutorial um, anyway. But so for example, up here, um, like I said, this is an example slideshow that I had my students do from their Big Island trip. So we went to the Big Island and I had my students, you know, title just Hawaii Volcanoes National Park um, and put like a little image here on the right. So let me move this um, little box here. Okay, so right here on the right, everyone, um, there's there's some templates already here that Adobe Spark Video gives you. So you can do a full screen. So full screen means that it's all just one plain um, one plain canvas background. A split screen, just like this one I have here, you can see you can put a title there. You can put um, another image on the right. You can do vice versa. Um, it's um, split screen and then on the bottom caption and title and text just like a PowerPoint PowerPoint slide. Okay, and then right here on the bottom. Um, I wanted to show this because uh, you can you can actually record so just like a video, you can do some narration um, in it. So with, with students when they upload pictures, they can talk about that photo and um, you know explain it in their own in their own voice, which is really cool. 
and kind of empowering, in my opinion, um, for the students to, to highlight what they learned um, during the trip. Okay, so this first photo here, I have, um, this was from one of the observatories during our trip on the Big Island, the Halima Uma'o Crater. And I remember the rain just finished and, you know, my students and I, we were looking out and we got lucky seeing a rainbow outside. And so we took some photos. So this is all these pictures on this um, Adobe Spark video. These are my photos and I'm just sharing it with you guys because I didn't want to share um, my students, you know, without their permission and, you know, with all the uh, privacy issues and things like that. So uh, this one, for example, so how would you upload a picture? Um, so let's say in the background, you have like a blank can canvas. And if you press photo um, on the right, it gives you the option to take a photo right away. So some of you, um, sometimes our students have iPads or they have tablets. Um, not everybody has laptops. So what they can do is they can take a picture with their tablet or their phone at the time um, with Adobe Spark, which is actually an app too. It was pretty cool. So they, they don't always have to be in a laptop. They can use Adobe Spark um, with, with a phone or with a tablet, you know, at home. Um, so for example, what I did was upload photo and then I have like this uh, folder, you know, that's just with the photos that I have from the Big Island trip that's already on my computer or whichever device that you're using. And then on the bottom here, is you can add a caption. So this this one is this, um, it's the third option here with the black canvas, or blank canvas, and then there's a caption on the bottom. So right here, I just named it um, Halima Uma'o, which is just, you know, the crater here, just to remind myself like, hey, like we visited this part, you know, on the big island. And then a couple other things. I remember, I, I think I had those students like take pictures of the different, uh, the different plants. So I, I teach science uh, fifth or eighth grade science and I had the students you know take pictures of the plants that we would see on um, on the big island so one of them was the hapu'u ferns um, and then all the other ones like uh, the ohia trees which is you know kind of teardrop in my eye they're kind of slowly fading away but you know it's a, it's um we, we try to document what we can you know in this time um, so kind of did the same thing here with the with the caption on the bottom and you can do a narration. So for example, if I press this, I can say something like, you know, uh, these are the hapu'u ferns, and then that would record it. And then once your video is complete, you can play that back and actually listen to yourself. And um, if the recording was clear, or if you need to talk louder and, uh, and so forth. Okay. All right, just some other couple example photos here. So the crater overlook, uh, this is one of those little sections, you know, that we stopped off from the bus. And um, another photo here with the, with the olivine uh, little um, things that we found, you know, on the Big Island and with, uh, with all the things. And I, I told my students, you know, we can't take this back. You know, we have to respect, we have to respect the land and, you know, Pele especially, and you, you guys know. So uh, definitely wanting to learn more about it, but, um, keeping our respect with where we were um, in that. And then this photo, so uh, just kind of going along here with, with our different kind of days in our trip. Um, but this one was at the Kilauea Iki um, crater. And uh, these are some lava rocks down here, the A'a rocks, uh, one, of, one of the types, um, but definitely one of those examples that you can, that you can also put here. Um, for Adobe Spark video, okay? And then these last couple of uh, slides here are parts of Adobe Spark video. You can put, you know, your credits, you can put your name on there, you can put sources, um, depending on where you got those pictures from, or if you use some songs, you can, like this one, I used the song um, from this artist and, uh, you know, what they used it for. So these are already pre-made templates. Um, on Adobe Spark Video. And then Adobe Spark Video, since it's already um, a brand here or a, a type of, of app, it's already kind of in place. So this is one of the things, it's like their watermark that um, you cannot remove just because you were using um, Adobe Spark. Okay, 
So you're probably wondering, what does this video look like uh, once you play it? So you can do, you, you can press preview up here and it shows you um, what the video would look like. Okay, so let me try this again and hopefully the sound um, getting darker over here in Oregon. Okay. So that was just one example of, of some project that you can do as a slideshow or a video with your students, um, Spark Video. Okay, and then I posted the link down there um, in, in, the, in the Google Slides of this particular project that I was working on um, with that. Okay, so now let's move on to Spark Page. So besides slideshows and videos, Adobe Spark for educators, this is also a really cool free kind of, kind of um, part here with Adobe Spark. But Page is, um, is, we is a website, so it gives your students a tool, or even you as a teacher, to make your own web page. And you're probably wondering, why do we need a web page if we have a school web page? You know, we're using all these sources. But um, so, for example, my students, um, I, I'm part of student council, and, and my, my student leaders in student council, we document um, events throughout the year, and they, they upload like little little articles and, and so the whole school can see what we've been doing um, from my student council leaders as well as the entire school. So it's a good networking tool that, that um, the students can do and it gives them ownership to show, um, to document on that particular website. And also this is one link, so that way you can just share it with parents. Newsletters, how many of you in here, maybe like a, in the comments, how many of you in here made a, a newsletter before or to you know tell your parents what was going on and or even the families you know the of your students that um, that you're teaching so with newsletters um adobe spark page could be very very useful for teachers for us teachers because we can we can put pictures of our projects we can put pictures of you know events coming up um so speaking of projects i have this example again from adobe spark page that I made with my students um, from my eighth grade chemistry class. So let me show you what that looks like here in a sec. Or I guess I can go back every week, right? Can you add videos in the Adobe video? You can, you can add videos in the Adobe video. Um, again, you would just have to press that preview part um, while you're editing it, while you're on there on that page. And just to make sure that the, the sound is okay um, the quality is um, is working as well. Okay, and then, oh, every week, yes, okay. All right, so let me go back to the Spark page and go to my next project here. Okay, so, and then the cool thing about um, Adobe Spark is that there's this kind of whole main page where you can do sorts and lots of different projects and templates um, on what you're doing. Okay, so let me go back to my projects here. Okay, so this, this one is an example from Adobe Spark page. Okay. I love how Adobe has those little questions um, to kind of keep up with you and all that, okay. All right, so Adobe Spark page, for example, um, so I had my students, like I said, I teach distance learning and during this time and my eighth graders, I had them, um, they, they were learning about elements and atoms and the structure of atoms and how many of you in here teach science or, um, you know, and, and have kind of struggled with teaching your kids online, you know, especially with experiments and projects. So um, this is one of the hands-on things that I had them do, but definitely, um, so what I asked my students was find, you know, materials from home that you can use. So they, they found like paper plates, they found um, little beads, they used rice, they used like little, little tiny minute objects, and they use that to represent protons, neutrons, and electrons. It's really cool actually, um, and, and, and really creative, um, especially for those kids. So anyway, what you can do is you can title um, your, your, 
your Adobe Spark page to your web page. So how do you do that? Well, um, there will be an empty box in there. So for example, if I click this, you can just, you know, rename that. It says add a title. So you can name it, um, you know, eighth grade um, Adam project. Adam project um, on the bottom, you know, you can put another subtitle there. So you can put something like, you know, from um, St. Francis school or just um, another heading that you want to put, but definitely it's it's a way to, again, to kind of showcase to your parents and um, to families uh, to kind of network and, um, and, and show what your students um, have been working on, you know, with those projects. So for example, I, um, again, I, I press that upload part where you can you can add photos or you can add, you know, little blurb. So there's, so photos, what I did here with the project, you can add a photo, you can add text. So text, um, maybe for those of you that teach ELA, that could be a very, very good um, option. If, if you do like journals, journaling um, for that for that week, or if you have a big project on students doing journals or reflections, you know, that could be all in one link. And so you don't have to go through Google Classroom or look through your students, every single file and their names, you know, in, in, in Classroom, it's all in one link. Um, that they can post. Um, button here, button means that um, when you press that, it goes to something else. So for example, if you want to show a video on that web page, you can put that and then there's a little button there that says you can name it as click here or video here or however you want um, for your um, Spark page. Uh, video, you can also put here photo grid. So my example here is most likely a photo grid. So I uploaded all of my students um, add a models and it, it just resizes it for you. So Adobe Spark page, they make it into a way where depending on the size of the photo, um, they rearrange it um, for you here. So just, um, you know, little things that my students made. And so that way, um, when you're writing those newsletters, because we love communicating with our parents and keeping them up to date, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> So we, uh, we want to send this link, you know, just one link out, and then these parents can be updated with, um, with what your students are working on or what they're learning. Okay, so hopefully that helps a little bit um, with that. And the link to this project is also posted um, on the Google Sites. All right, okay, so Adobe Spark page. Alrighty, so now let's move on to Spark Post this time. So the third part of um, Adobe Spark. So we went over video, page, and the last feature. This It's another free feature, so no worries. Uh, you know, wipe your sweat away, it's okay. It's, it's all free um, with that. So Adobe Spark Post. Um, Adobe Spark Post is, like I was saying earlier, like a flyer. So you, have, you can have your students make flyers um, for me personally, as a science teacher, it's helped a lot with, with students making um, infographics. So infographics, sometimes, I don't know about you guys um, in, there in Honolulu, but my, my students, the curriculum we have was written in 1998. Um, so we are super behind in our textbooks and sometimes the pictures in there, oh my goodness, they're so old. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so out of date. So um, these infographics, Adobe Spark Post has been very helpful with um, keeping keeping the energy or the um, you know the the visualization of those pictures um, kind of uh, interesting for those students and the way that they present um, the projects. So I have another example here um, that I wanted to show you guys on that. So give me one moment here. Put this one out. Okay. So you can press that mighty uh, home button again and then go back to projects. All right, so frog in nature. Okay, so this one is uh, Adobe Spark Post um, for this example. Okay, so Adobe Spark Post everyone. Um, this is just an example I just called frog in nature. Um, you can literally just start from a canvas and there's a lot of uh, templates on the side that you can use for your flyer, for um, you know those infographics like I was talking about. But definitely, you know, a lot of this has like quotes as, as well. So um, if if you want 
you know, your students to kind of incorporate a discussion or they want to, they want to, excuse me, they want to talk about, you know, something that they're interested in um, or they want to share with their classmates. Um, definitely, there's a lot of variations that they can use here. Okay, so templates right here on the left side. Um, Adobe Spark gives you a lot of things. So, for example, um, you know, a lot of this you can use as uh, in any way, there, there's really a lot of templates depending on what you want to use it for. So there's, um, you know, you want to promote an event at school or you want to, um, you want to talk about, you know, plastic free, what does that look like? Um, you know, so let's use this as an example, right? Plastic free, uh, have you tried it? So if you're talking about, you know, uh, saving the environment or, um, something like a, a resources, you know, that you can use with your students, you can, um, you can definitely change, change the wording to this. So you can rename it as, you know, um, um, give me one sec here. Okay. So you can add text on, on the picture. So if you found a template, you can go to the next step kind of along the lines on the left side where you can add a text, you can add pictures, icons. It's really like a lot of ownership for the, for the students, in my opinion, where they, they won't be like, oh, um, there's only like five things I can use. But with Adobe Spark post, um, they can go on and on and on and thousands of templates that are all free um, for them to use and for you to use. Okay, um, so if we did that, you know, frog in nature or force of nature example, you can kind of move that around. You can um, change the outline. You can change the shape of it. Um, right, so a lot of different things that you can use um, as a flyer. So definitely some advertising, some, some way of communicating with your, with your students and your school of um, something coming up, so like, like a especially like a, for, for us Catholic school teachers, um, Catholic Schools Week, right? If you want your students to make like a flyer for Catholic Schools Week, they can choose uh, one of these templates for that. And then pictures as well. So, so very similar to Adobe Spark video and page where they can, um, they can upload a picture that they already took and um, they can definitely put that here for Adobe Spark page. Um, icons, so let's say if we, type nature again to kind of keep that example. Icons, it gives you like these little icons. So kind of like emojis, but like like a really neat little tool if they want to add little icons throughout their flyers. So if we're going to put a leaf here or a tree, they can choose, choose any one of these. So if I chose this icon, okay, so the background is, if you want to change that color, you can definitely, um, you know, choose which color you'd like. You can go from magenta to, I don't know, let's, let's do green or something or white to kind of keep the same background um, on there. Okay. Okay. So something like that. And then you can resize it. You can move it um, in that case. Okay. And just delete this one and this one. Okay. All right. And then design assets. Design assets. Um, this is more like a, a thing that Adobe Spark Post has, where it has like a lot of um, seasonal things, some things that most people use, which is trending illustrations, so like little outline drawings that people have made already um, with the Adobe Spark um, Post. And then all these little uh, templates here with the yellow on the top, that's some. Um, that means it's either someone that has made that template and would want you to pay for them. So this is the part where unfortunately it's not free um, because somebody else, like maybe another teacher or someone else, I mean, another student that has made it and is, is trying to, um, you know, make profit for it. Kind of like teachers pay teachers at website or other websites that we use um, to gather more information. But definitely there's more than enough uh, already free templates and designs here that we can use. Okay, 
And then backgrounds. Backgrounds, um, just like our PowerPoints, how many of you had students or yourself, you made PowerPoints where you cannot read the, the words or you cannot read, um, you know, what, what you're trying to say or convey um, in that. So um, definitely that's a way to, to minimize that. That's a way to look at um, what you can do instead or um, a different tool, definitely. Then logos, um, logos down here is another way that you can um, add, you know, like the WeSpark logo, or if your students want to make their own logo, like kind of like a signature or what they want to represent as like their own work, kind of like a watermark um, that they can put and also shows the student like, hey, like I made this flyer, I worked so hard on it, and I'm going to put my name on the bottom as a, as a logo because that represents uh, my work uh, or my, my, uh, my ownership. Okay. And then libraries, libraries over here is just kind of like um, different groups that are different classes per se for us educators. So libraries, you can make one, you know, for your, for your one section of your class or, or all the sections of your classes, um, whichever way you want to use it um, as an educator. Okay. So that's just an example here with um, Adobe Spark Post. And we can go back here to Google Slides, but that, that link um, to this project is also down here. So if, if you guys want to change my uh, template or if you want to work on my projects, you are more than welcome to, to do that um, here on Adobe Spark. Okay, so uh, let me show you another video here on Adobe Spark in the classroom. So this, this, this video was from Adobe and um, this is a public school teacher here in the mainland that she has used Adobe Spark for. Um, so let me just play that for you here. And if you have any questions, feel free to keep typing um, in the chat. Okay, all right. The sound okay? My students this year are amazing. They love to learn. They are ready for anything. I am always looking for new ways for them to be able to demonstrate their knowledge, new things for them to use. I love Adobe Spark because it keeps my students completely engaged. It's also intuitive, so it's not difficult for them to jump right in. It is endless what I can do with this. We can do it for history. We can even do it for science experiments and investigations. We decided to make a Spark video about what makes fourth grade awesome. In fourth grade, we did shell art. I got Probably started. the biggest reason they love it is because they can personalize it. There is a lot of choice involved. Every single person's is totally unique. The voice, the pictures, the icons, the text. They also can choose a variety of themes for their video. It really gives them a feel of they are truly making a movie. It's so much more than just a paper. It's an entire experience that people can watch. We love The Lion King, and in the play, I was a hyena. I love the fact that they can use their voices bringing life to what they actually have written. And in the play, I was a hyena. It makes it so personal to them. They can use it at home, they can work on it no matter where they are. They can share with their family and their grandparents and their classmates. It's really nice to be able to give them a glimpse into what their children are doing during the day, what they're learning. I think what I love most about my job is when they know that they have learned something and that they own it, and they're like, oh, I got it. It's me. I'm always trying to make learning fun and exciting and engaging. And when I'm using Adobe Spark, it's fun to learn it. It's fun to share what we've learned. It's fun. OK, so another um, example here with Adobe Spark. Uh, so one of the teachers that has used, it, has used Adobe Spark in her classroom. Okay, I like that little feature where the where one of the students was narrating, you know, the the, the video um, during their project. Okay, all right, everyone. Um, so you're probably wondering, how do I sign up here with Adobe Spark? Uh, what do I what do I do next? You know, um, so I put some links in here, everyone, um, that you can use uh, to kind of help you out a little bit because you know it gets overwhelming with this, you know, this big website here, especially all those templates. 
you know, you can go on and on and on. And, and how many of you have stayed, you know, in your classroom and you're working hours and hours and hours and you're like, oh, I, I haven't eaten anything yet or I need to drink water, you know, because you're so busy with, um, with working the whole time. So um, definitely these videos here have, or this first one is a Google Drive where um, you can you can access, you know, tutorial videos on Adobe Spark, Adobe Video, and Adobe um, Page. So Adobe, uh, yeah, Video, Page, and Post. So all three are in there. And um, just another tutorial of how to click or where to click and how to find the information of those templates. Um, another cool tool here that I put as a link is the Adobe Spark Educators Facebook page. So this is, um, this is a really cool site um, or page on Facebook where um, people can, uh, it's kind of like Reddit or like one of those sites where you can ask uh, other educators who have been using Spark as well. And if you have specific questions on like, you know, hey, I'm having trouble with this. Does anyone have examples of, you know, an Adobe Spark video that, that my students can do? Or does anyone have an example project of like a web page. So it's a very open um, kind of Facebook page here with other educators um, that also use Adobe Spark um, that can help as well. Okay. And then the last one on here, um, Adobe, Adobe Education Exchange. Um, this website, I wanted to share this as well because you're probably wondering, you know, um, again, where can I get those actual examples? Do I need to reinvent the wheel? No, right? We know not to reinvent the wheel. And um, this is also this kind of big library here for educators where you can just go in the search box and find, you know, a lot of resources. So here you can see projects that people have made, um, lesson plans even. Like if you want to have a step-by-step -step basis of you know, um, oh, I really like this project, but how am I going to introduce it to my students? How am I going to scaffold their knowledge, or where do I even start? So a lot of the, a lot of teachers in this um, Adobe Exchange Education Exchange, they have uploaded the lesson plans um, that they've used that they've um, created with their students or for their students, um, and then as well as Adobe Education Exchange. Um, what you can do is there's a lot of free, again, the, the four letter word that we love, free courses that we can sign up for. So um, I don't know about you guys, but if you have some extra time, you know, not, not just saying after you eat and remember to drink water, if you have some extra time, um, you can always enroll in different courses. So especially now, like with um, distance learning, with hybrid learning, and as, as technology progresses, Adobe, Education Exchange, this is particularly for educators, for teachers, where we can sign up for free courses. Um, so that could be a course on Adobe Spark, a course on Adobe Lightroom, Photoshop, um, or how to make a project. There's so many different um, courses where you can add to your professional development um, through this big library that Adobe um, made just for teachers. So Adobe Education Exchange um, is a really, really cool tool. Okay, all right. So I just wanted to put those three links on there um, just in case if you um, are a little overwhelmed because there's a lot of different um, parts here with Adobe, Adobe Spark. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna leave this here to um, have you guys ask any questions or um, maybe if you can just type in the chat, those of you who are thinking of using Adobe Spark, um, in that case, is there a limit? Oh, okay. So let me, um, thank you, Erica. So give me a, some time here. Is there a limit to use, to the use of Adobe Spark in that, that can students use it as many times as they want for as long as they want? Um, I don't think so. I don't think there's a limit. I think as long as you have your accounts um, with your student, oh, sorry, it's not student, your teacher email, um, as long as it's active and you have your, your students um within your class in there they can they can keep editing their projects they can keep making a web page a video um a uh, 
a yeah video post um, a web page as long as they as long as their name is in there in that system under your account as the educator so um yeah there's not really a limit okay all right any other questions here folks um on adobe spark okay all right so um i let me just leave this last one here and um, just so this this Google document and uh, thank you Erica again for uh, posting that link uh, to this this Google slides. But again, uh, please, please, please email me. Um, let me know if you have any questions at all um, about how to use Adobe Spark, especially if you're not um, entirely sure for more examples, I can kind of help you run through share lesson plans with you even um, but just please send me an email or um, you can get my contact from uh, Sacred Hearts here. Okay. Well, I just wanted to say mahalo to Coco and everyone for joining us and your participation. We hope that you found this session helpful and make some valuable connections and some cool videos. Um, please help us by completing the evaluation. I went ahead and put it in the chat. Um, and don't forget, you'll be entered to win one of 20 parts. I said that right this time. Okay. <laughs> so thanks again for being here today. Um, feel, feel free to um, come back and look at the sessions when the recording goes out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this. But um, if Coco wants, she can hang out for a few. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.